Hey y'all, this is Cindy with Stamping in Dixie. I'm an independent demonstrator for Stamping Up, and I live in Alabama. I would like to show you this morning a new product. It's not actually new new because it's been out since January, but it's still fairly new on the market. Uh, it's a suite out of our mini catalog, and it's actually featured on the front of the catalog, but there's so much more. Uh, I'm going to turn the page and show you the inside. Look at these gorgeous samples. Did you all know our catalogs all are also idea books? You can actually just look in here and find ideas and either do exactly case, exactly what they did, copy and share, or you can you know, use that as an idea and move on and make, create something of your own. I love all kinds of paper crafting. Today, and out of this suite, which is called the Fine Art Floral Suite, we're going to be using the um, Fine Art Floral... Um, Mm, bundle art gallery that's what it's called art gallery bundle and we're also going to be using the designer paper and the specialty acetate paper we're going to be using the gorgeous uh, ribbon I love ribbon and this this ribbon is just fabulous we're going to be using that this morning um, so I have several things I want to show you about using the um, golden garden designer specialty acetate so let me move this out of the way and show you our project so this morning we're going to be creating this card, all right, thinking of you, and it's just kind of a sweet card. Um, you know, so many, day, so many days right now we need thinking of you cards for different reasons. So I wanted to um, make one that was really pretty and, and kind of, um, I don't know, classy looking, kind of special. So we're using this art gallery stamp set. Now we're only going to be using this little small flower here and this flower spray here this morning. That's all we're going to need. So let me move that out of the way. I've already got those on blocks. The um, saying, thinking of you, comes from the woven heirloom set, which is in the annual catalog. This is a phenomenal set if you don't have it right now. Um, you know, we just need those thinking of you and prayers and sympathy, and it's just a great set. We've got a lot of good sayings in it. And then just some background abstract um, collage kind of pieces that are fun to play with. So that's the two sets we're using on this card. The real highlight of this card is the paper, obviously. So I'm going with the colors that, that are um, listed in the paper pack for what colors coordinate with this designer series paper. So let me show you that real quickly. I'm going to put the card over here and show you that paper and then we'll get on with it. So this is, um, I've already, it's not even out of the package yet. So this is the paper that comes with this suite. And one of the things I wanted to show you is if you can see on camera, I'm not sure. Um, it's got like a textured look, like an artist palette. They actually use artists to paint these and then they photocopy them. So they're just gorgeous. The back sides, well, they're not all on here, the back side. That's the fronts. But you can see they're beautiful hand-painted flower arrangements. And then you've got some kind of geometric or more subtle images on the backs of most of them. Uh, and you get two pieces of each paper in the designer series paper pack. So that's most of the designs. I've used a couple of them, so that's why I didn't sh any more. Now, but the specialty paper that we're using today is actually this gold acetate sheet um, that comes, that fits on top. It There's two, three pieces in a pack. And this one and uh, one and this one, I've got a sample. I've already used all the rest of it. This one. So you can see this has got a pink background and a little bit different flower design. These two, actually, the gold uh, matches the paper exactly. So you can literally layer it right on top of it. Cut your pieces so that you can get at least six full-size cards like this with a piece left over. I'll show you what was left over from this pack. I had a smaller piece that I've already used, but this, this piece was left over and this long strip was left over. So that's the two pieces I had left over from just cutting this into six um, five and a quarter by four inch panels uh, to match with the DSP. Now I can cut those two into different pieces or sizes or just use them as strips on a different card. So I technically can get probably eight cards out of this pack, but I can get six full-size cards. Um, and then there's another, there's another um, 
sheet of acetate that comes with just kind of a geometric uh, shape. I hope that's not too um, too much glare for y'all. I can't really tell, but if you put it on the back of one of the DSP, you're going to like it better. That is on one of the dark blue backgrounds, and you see it really is pretty, and you could cut out any kind of images, or you could just, um, like a circle or a rectangle or something, or you could just layer it like I did on this full-size card. Now, the other thing I wanted to show you, though, is, for example, you wouldn't want to put that over that one more than likely because it's really busy. It doesn't really add to the paper. Isn't that beautiful paper, though? And the same thing with this one. You wouldn't want it on that side. But I don't even know that I like it on the back side of this one. I thought at first maybe it was made to coordinate. But it really doesn't match up exactly. Um, it's just off a little. So um, I couldn't even do it. There's a silver side also. The opposite side is silver. So it just doesn't match up. So I probably wouldn't try to use it. Because that would drive me crazy. Um, if With it not being matched up exactly. Anyway, that's just how to how to uh, layer this this paper. You could use it just by itself. You don't actually have to layer it on DSP. But the piece we're using today, oh, I actually have two pieces here, um, is from from that set, and you can see that it has um, it layers right on top of the flower. It's not actual perfect perfect lineup, but it's pretty close. It's good enough for you know you want it to have that little um, like outline image and you just layer it on there and cut it the same and I actually cut these two together I layered them on top of each other and cut them together now another thing I want to show you about this paper is uh, you need to pull the back off of it of the the acetate sheet so that it has a protective coating on the back and I can't do it with my nails. You might be able to just kind of play with it with your fingernail. Uh, these are just a little bit too thick. But see if you get that paper piecing tool or your take a pick tool underneath there, then this film just pulls right off. And that's just for packing purposes so that it doesn't get scratched while it's in the in the package. Um, so you can see the, the the silver side is pretty also, which you could put on a, just a plain piece of cardstock. Um, yeah, something like that. That's pretty in itself. Uh, it does not layer. It does not match up with the flowers. But if you turn it over, then the gold pieces do match up with the flowers. So let me um, sit down for a minute. I've been standing so that I could see better. Now I'm going to sit so I can stamp better. So our pieces um, are four by five and a quarter, the designer series paper, with the designer series acetate, um, which is called Garden Specialty Acetate. You've got a strip that's um, about an inch wide, and I cut them a little long, but they need to be at least four inches. This one's like four and a quarter. We'll trim it off when we get ready to put it on our card. And then our base, um, well, there's our envelope. Our base is your regular A4 card. It's eight and a half this direction, five and a half this direction, scored at four and a quarter in the middle. And then we have another inside layer that is four by five and a quarter, just a plain piece of Whisper White. So let's get stamping. I'm going to move this out of the way, and we'll do our stamping first, and then we'll put the card together. So for the inside on this one, because I like to wait until I use the card to add a sentiment in it all the, most of the time, if I don't know what the card's for, I um, just put some in decoration, and then I'll come back and add... Um, a sentiment when I get ready to use the card. I'm going to pull in my um, paper piercing mat. Uh, I love this thing. I have it wrapped in a piece of um, of our grid paper just so that it can protect it and I can stamp on and off of my cardstock and not ruin it. Um, it helps with the photopolymer. Now you know photopolymer are the stamps that are clear where you can see all the way through them <laughs> are red in this case because I've been stamping with Poppy Parade. But um, you need that little extra pad to get a really good image. So I'm going to ink up this stamp in um, um, Poppy Parade. Now, I will show you one other little trick, I think, unless I didn't. Yeah, I brought it. Okay. So I, want my, I don't want my stems to necessarily be red. Um, so what I can do is take a blender pen y'all see that? Take a blender pen, and I can go back and just kind of rub off some of the ink. Then I have to go to scratch paper and clean off that brush. 
See how it just the red comes off right there? I can go back and do it again. And that way, and the, the long one's not as big a deal because I'm not going to stamp the whole image on there. The ones I really want to get are these little small ones right here. And the reason is because I want to be able to cover them in... Um, um, can y'all hear my dog? She wants in, and I'm not going to stop and let her in at the moment. I want to color them with a different color ink, and it will kind of muddle the color if I still have the poppy parade there. It won't cover well. All right, so that kind of gets that off. Let me put the cap back on that so it doesn't dry out. And... I'm going to... There we go. Now, see, so you can still see where those lines were, but they're not quite as obvious, and they will cover easier. So I'm, I'm going to use my dark um, mossy meadow. Ow, which I broke. <laughs> and so I have to kind of play with it to get it to come up, get my lid off of it. I don't know what how I broke it, but I, I managed to break it. I managed to pull it apart. All right, now can y'all see what I'm doing? I'm just going to go over those red lines, those poppy parade lines um, right there. Uh, I'll go ahead and do this one since it's down here. And you can try to do these. I didn't clean these up. Um, it might turn a little brown looking. That's why I like taking the color off. I have tried, excuse me, <clears throat> I have tried to do that also with um, a Q-tip. And if you do it, with try to do it with a Q-tip, I suggest you wet the Q-tip first to take the oil, the um, ink off, because otherwise you tend to get little fuzzies, little cotton fuzzes. So be sure when you put, click your blends, you heard that click, be sure you hear that click so that you can... Um, Make sure it's closed well. If it's not closed well, then it won't, it'll dry out. All right, so let's move that piece out of the way. I didn't need to close my ink pad. I'm so used to closing an ink pad, y'all, because I have a tendency to um, get my fingers in them or my clothes or something. So I'm just bringing in a small scrap of Whisper White that I hit, or Basic White now. You know that we've changed from Whisper White to Basic White because of an issue of getting Whisper White anymore, but... Um, so I'm just going to stand, oh, I don't really like that. It's not quite dark enough. Let's ink that one up and try again. All right. And, and when you're using photopolymer, it's a good thing to, to give it, leave it there for just a second and let it, and I still have a little light on that corner, let it um, transfer. Make sure the ink's had time to transfer. All right, we're going to need to punch, uh, cut that one out with the dies, which we are going to be using. And here I go, closing the ink again. I will show you the die, though, while I'm there. So this is the die set. One of the things I do is I put my dies in these little envelopes on a magnet, but I cop photocopy it so that I know all the pieces that are supposed to be in there. And we're using this little piece here, and that way it helps me keep from losing dies. But we're using this one. We actually have used this piece also, but I've already pre-cut that piece. Um, it was this piece here. It's for your saying, but I'm using it as a border, and I've already pre-cut it out of a piece of mossy meadow. And so that's all the dies, and I'm not going to have to do die cutting because I actually um, already die cut it for you. So there it is once it's been run through the candy. I call my cutting die, ugh, cutting and die cut, I can't say it, cutting and embossing machine Candy M. So if you haven't watched my videos and I say Candy M or Candy M&M, &M, I'm talking about the um, die cutting, let's see, cutting and, uh, I can't say it now, cutting and embossing machine, C-A-N-D-E-M, and the cutting embossing machine, M&M, &M, is the mini cutting embossing machine. So if I say candy M and candy M&M, &M, that's what I'm talking about. But there's our piece already cut out. So we have that, so we, we can clean this stamp, and I am going to go ahead and clean this. Just off camera, I have my chamois over here, because, um, that photopolymer really picks up the ink, and when you're using, especially when you're using a red ink, um, it's going to 
stain. So, and it won't hurt the stamp. It still gives you a really good image. It's just, I don't want my, you know, stamps to be totally pink. Now I'm fixing to stamp the saying, which I chose out of that heirloom set. And it's called, uh, or it says thinking of you. So <clears throat> open my ink pad back up. It's a good habit y'all, but I, I get to where I just close it every time I use it, even if I'm going to need it again. Get some of that back in. All right, I'm not using the pad this time because I'm using a regular cling stamp. And I'm going to stamp this just, it's a one inch strip, so I'm going to stamp it not really in the middle, but kind of right there. All right, worked perfect. I love our cling stamps. They already have that foam layer built into them, so you don't need that foam pad to use the cling stamp. Now, I do think, other than our envelope, let's just go ahead and do our envelope since we've got the ink open. We're going to get everything stamped out of the way right here. So for that, I will bring back in this piece, and I'm using the large flower image, and I'm just going to stamp it a couple times. And this time, I'm not going to worry about cleaning it off and, you know, getting my green on there. I'm just going to... I just like to put some images on the outside of my envelopes so that they look festive. And you know when you get this in the mail, you're getting um, a happy mail. You're not getting a bill. You're getting happy mail. So there's our envelope. So that's done. Done, done, done. All right, let me reach over here and clean this one off quickly. All right. I should have done that when I was doing the other one. Now we can close the ink pad and actually move it out of our way because we don't need it anymore. And I don't need the pad anymore. All right, let's put this card together. Now, another issue that you have with this um, acetate is any any um, adhesive I put behind there is going to show. So let me, I already took the back off of it, didn't I? Did I take the back off of it? I did one, but did I, did it, did it, uh, did I do it on this one? Because I had two over here. I've put together one or two of them, y'all, with the... I think I already did on this one. All right, I put together a couple of them with the uh, acetate still on them. Or the, the not acetate, but the protective film. And they, they look okay. You can't really tell the difference. So I've got that lined up. Now, I know... So this is kind of the trick to this. Get it lined back up, Cindy. All right, so the thinking of you right here, we know it's going to go kind of here in the middle. And then this piece is going to go right here, kind of to the end, like that. I need that piece to go at least to the end. So that's going to go there. Can put it like that a little bit more. And so I'm going to trim this off. Um, but before I do that, I have this piece that I cut out, the green piece. So I'm going to layer it. Now, if you're making more than one of these, you could layer it, um, you could cut it in half. I've got one here where I did just that. <laughs> I can't get it over there. You could cut it in half and just put that little bit under there. But since I have a whole piece and I'm only making one card, I'm just going to use the whole thing. Now, I know I've got to cut some of this end off, and this is not quite long enough to give me the whole length. So I'm just going to put it about right there. We'll move this out of the way for a second. Bring in my um, silicone mat. Now, if you're doing any kind of gluing any kind of gluing you really need this silicone mat it is um just is awesome for making sure things don't get sticky on your work site and for just any kind of glue it, photopolymer stamps work great on this there's several techniques you can do using photopolymer stamps uh, with this silicone mat aside from just gluing on it um, you can do reverse images with it, but nothing sticks to it. Like our adhesive doesn't stick to it. The Tombow doesn't stick to it, even hot glue. So um, it makes it really nice to be able to line things up. If it's not in the right spot, I can pick it up and start over again. All right, so there we go. I didn't get it quite even, which is kind of <clears throat> not unusual for me. I usually use Tombow a lot for that reason. I can kind of maneuver better with Tombow. A little bit of eyesight problem, but on this card, I felt like I needed to use the, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, the um, snake, uh, what a stamp and seal. There we go. Still having to get used to that new name. All right, so right before the middle of the card, I'm just going to lay down a couple of strips. 
maybe three, of snail adhesive. And this is just the regular snail, not the snail plus. And I'm going to layer that just as perfectly as I can. And it should fit perfect because I cut them together. So, and then I'm just going to rub across it, make sure it adheres well. All right, now I can take this piece and put adhesive on the back of it. And I'll layer it right here in the middle. So that way my, um, I can, there it is. My, my oops, uh, adhesive that I put underneath there won't show. I need to make sure I got it, that it's, flat on this end and I can cut off the extra on this end all right there we go can y'all hear my dog she's at the back door kind of begging to get in or demanding would be a better word than begging she's demanding to get in all right now I'm going to just turn it over so I can see that I follow that layer and cut that little piece off all right so I'm going to wait and add our um, embellishment here when, once we get it on the card. The next thing I need to do is add my ribbon piece. So I'm going to bring in a C block, uh, which is my favorite for tying bows or knots. And I'm going to, when you're going this direction, the four inch way, this, this is plenty big enough. And I tie my ribbon around the block. It just is easy. I don't cut it off. That way I don't waste ribbon, especially this beautiful gold laced ribbon I don't want to waste and then I'm just going to tie a knot ah, maybe this is the hardest thing I do on camera I've said that many times just because I can tie a bow I am good at bow tying but for some reason when I'm videoing it I, it doesn't come out well all right so there we go we just tie it doesn't really matter that it wasn't tight and then we just pull it there. Now I'm going to pull in my good paper snips. These are my um, ribbon cutting paper snips. And just kind of cut that down a little bit. Okay. Now I want this knot. Move that back out of the way. Over here on this side. So I'm going to um, just cut my little loop about right there. All right, so that gives me plenty of room to, um, let's see, that's going to go like that. And I'm just going to flip it over. Make sure it's not down over my thinking of you. My thinking of you could have been down a little further. And then I'm just going to put some adhesive here. And adhere that one. And I'm going to do the same thing on this side. If your stamp and steel won't go, just do it on your mat for just a, a flick and it will start right back up. It just needs something that can grab onto. All right, so we're ready to adhere this. So I'm just going to, and I'm going to put a little extra here and here just to make sure where that um, ribbon is attaches. So here's our card base. I said it was Poppy Parade. And I'm just going to make sure my layer has got an even border, top, bottoms, and both sides, which I told y'all I'm not very good at. All right, so there we go. That's it. Now, the last thing we need to do is we're going to take some dimensionals and pop our um, flower head up on some dimensionals. And I'm going to use a couple of the large ones on the back of this. Pull those backs off. <laughs> Stick into my fingernails. And we're going to sit this little flower right there. There we go. Perfect. All right. So that is the outside of our finished card. That was quick. We did that in just tw about 24 minutes, even with me talking you through it. And... inside of our card we're just gonna layer it right there and we're done bam it's over 
So, I hope y'all enjoyed watching this. Thank you. I appreciate your time. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I would love for you to do that. If you don't have a catalog, if you will send me a comment with your name and your email, I'll get with you and we'll get you a catalog in the mail. Uh, the, the January through July catalog will be good. Um, I think it's January through June or June. Uh, will be good for a few more months. Celebration will end um, at the end of September. So if you're not familiar with Celebration, uh, check my blog post or at stampingindixie.com or you can like my Facebook page, which is um, Stamping in Dixie or Stamping in Dixie Girls is my private group if you'd like to be part of that group. Thank you. I appreciate y'all watching and I hope to see you again real soon. Bye.